What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be working on Yuki. Not for anything good though. We actually, I'm recording this after the fact of something that happened. She broke down and I didn't have my camera on me when uh, when it happened. So it's going to be my, my phone's camera. Yuki is out of commission. Her bumper is right here on the ground. Uh, that means we've got Yuki down and we've got Kev's car down too. His bumper's not even on. That's just, it's a trend here. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the clips of what happened. Basically car shit itself hit the fucking bed bed it broke nothing too crazy but uh it's kind of disorienting to do the intros after i've already done everything anyways we'll just get right into the, the the breakdown so so the car decided to break down i wasn't expecting this which is why i don't actually have my my real camera but yeah she decided to break down i did a slight pull and uh instantly shit the bed um wrench light came on uh i was able to, i had enough momentum to coast in neutral all the way to a parking lot and I luckily had my handy Danner scanner and uh, was able to read the codes. The throttle body uh, is stuck closed. It's a P2112. So throttle body is stuck closed. I've been having a little bit of a problem with the throttle body. We had we were having problems tuning it in the first place when we got the first throttle body. Now I'm kind of stuck in a parking lot waiting for Kev to pick me up and then we'll tow the, the car back. But not how I thought today was going to go. I thought this car was freaking sound, indestructible. And then uh, she said, psych, not anymore. Get got. Fun stuff. It could have been worse. I could have been going up a hill and then not had momentum to get somewhere safe. Uh, and then had to like, be on the side of the road. Luckily, I wasn't going up a hill. And everything uh, is going to work out just fine. Best case scenario for a bad situation. So it all depends on how you look at it. And uh, I think we're looking at it in a positive light. So far, so good. We're all right. All right, it's a new day. Sun is out. Sun is out, cars are passing. It's a little chilly, but the car made it home. Uh, it was very difficult. I ended up having to take the bumper off. It wasn't difficult. I just didn't have the tools to take the bumper off. So it, it made it slightly more challenging. Not a big deal, I figured it out. Originally, I was gonna put the car in the garage, but then I was like, no, I don't want a car in the garage that's not gonna run for another two, three weeks or something like that. I'll explain what's going on after I pull the car off the, uh, off the trailer and then I'll explain like kind of what happened and then what my plans are. It's not a big deal uh, and it shouldn't be too crazy, but. But I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing off the trailer. It sat there overnight and it poured. So everything's nice and wet, nice and slippery. Having a great time, honestly, good stuff, chilly. But other than that, it should be pretty simple. finally off it took uh, a better part maybe an hour or so basically I was having some trouble with how low the car is the exhaust was scraping on the edge here normally you would use wood I don't have any wood so I used some leftover drywall from a project that I did earlier and it worked so if you have drywall and you have wood you can use that instead but that wasn't quite wasn't quite everything I needed so I was like okay well what if I over inflate the tires I was gonna do up to like 38 but as soon as I put the uh, tire pump on there, the tires were at like 23, 25 PSI. So they were underinflated, which obviously didn't help my case. Um, so I filled them up to 36 and that gave me the uh, one, a little bit of extra clearance, maybe like half an inch or two, which is, you know, highly needed. Uh, but two, it allowed me to roll over the drywall a lot easier than on a flat tire. So car's off. I'm gonna clean up the, the uh, trailer from all the drywall. And then, uh, and then we'll get back on the car. So with the throttle body being so new, I think it's only it's been on there less than 3,000 miles, and the car the car's just not driven very often at all. It's not a daily driver. It's more like a race car, even though I've never raced it. But I'm building it to be a race car, so it'll get there eventually. Uh, but with with the car having very little miles, or at least on this part, as soon as I figured out that it was a throttle body issue and that the circuit was closed, it was stuck closed, I called up the shop, National Speed. They're awesome. They've been doing a lot of work for me, and I, I trust my cars. They're 100%. So I called them up and I was like, hey, this is what's going on. They said, hey, no worries. That sucks, but uh, send send the throttle body over and we'll see if we can send it off to Whipple and, and get it recalibrated, get it fixed or whatever, um, whatever needs to get done. 
We're gonna go ahead and take off the throttle body so that we can pack it up, ship it off to them, and then we can get the process started for getting the car back on the road. Overall, easy kind of like, it's an easy fix. It's just gonna take a little bit of time um, with the shipping and then getting it to Whipple and then whatever process Whipple wants to do with it and then shipping it back. So she'll be down for a few weeks, but it's not, it could be worse. It could be like, oh, I blew up the transmission. That would be a lot of work and time. This is just time, not a lot of work. Look at that, that is freaking huge. I'm gonna clean up the gasket a little bit. Uh, it actually broke when I was taking it off, but that is a huge hole. That is, it doesn't look that big when it's on. I mean, it looks pretty okay, but like now that it's off, it is huge. It really tells you, and you can, you can see inside, oh my God. All right, now that we got the throttle body off, this thing is freaking, it's a, as big as my face. It's freaking huge. 132 millimeters right here, and it has caused nothing but headaches so far. Uh, with just idle, tuning, 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 tuning some more. Now, now this, I mean, I can only imagine how difficult it is to tune this, something this big, for idling, you know, at a, at a roughly a good amount. I mean, this just takes in so much air. And uh, the throttle body, or not throttle body, the actual intake is 150 millimeters. This is 132. So I can, I can only imagine how difficult that is. So they, they really do some good stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and box this up, send it out, set it down before I break it, <clears throat> even more than it already is. I was gonna take the car out because I, I felt like I was neglecting it a little bit, uh, hadn't driven it in a while, and I wanted to, you know, wanted to be nice to her. And then she wasn't nice to me. A little unfortunate, but we'll get through it. Not a big deal. I've got plenty of other projects that I can work on while uh, while I'm waiting for this one. So stick around, guys. If you haven't seen that last episode that I put, not episode. If you haven't seen that last video that I posted up with my project car, my drift car, uh, catching on fire. Go ahead and check that out. Yeah, I said that right. Catching on fire. Uh, I don't see that every day, so go ahead and check that one out. Um, and I'll, that'll be in the next next video, maybe um, fixing it or not angel swapping it or not, who knows. I do, I know what I'm doing, but you'll find out next time. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you want to. It's completely free. You can always change your mind later. We're making some good strides in, in the subscriber department, so appreciate you guys, you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Deuces.